Let's turn in our Bibles for our morning scripture to the fifth chapter of John's Gospel. Chapter 5, I shall read verses 1 through 9. Let's stand for the reading of God's Word. Sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for a feast of the Jews. Now there is in Jerusalem, near the Sheep Gate, a pool, which in Aramaic is called Bethesda, and which is surrounded by five covered colonnades. Here a great number of disabled people used to lie. The blind, the lame, the, the paralyzed, and they waited for the moving of the waters. From time to time, an angel of the Lord would come down and stir up the waters. The first one into the pool, after each such disturbance, would be cured of whatever disease he had. One who was there had been an invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, Do you want to get well? Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. While I'm trying to get in, someone else always goes down ahead of me. Then Jesus said to him, Get up, pick up your mat, and walk. At once the man was cured. He picked up his mat and walked. May God bless the reading of his word. Let us be seated as we pray together. And now, Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. In the storms of life, you are our refuge. And in the beauty of life, we see your hand. And Lord, the longer we walk with you, the more our hearts are filled with praise. You bid us come to you, Father, and worship and pour out our hearts to you. And Lord, we find that when we come and worship and pour out our hearts and give back to you in gratitude portion of what you've given to us, that we go away having received what we really need, forgiveness and mercy and guidance and fellowship. And so, Lord, even this day as we worship, we lay our burdens and our hopes before you. We know that you hear us when we pray. And so we lift up our friends who are sick and we ask for the healing that only you can give. We pray for our nation, Father, and for its leaders. Give them, Lord, we pray, wisdom and maturity. And Lord, we pray for this church. We ask for your guidance. And all God's people said, Amen. And he asked him, Do you want to be healed? You know, everybody seems to be waiting. Have you noticed that? There are some folks who are waiting for a wall to be built on the southern end of our country. There are other people who are waiting for the president to be impeached. There are others who are waiting for just the right person, man or woman, to come into your life. Some of you are probably waiting for vacation, school to be out. Some of you are waiting for the pulpit committee to bring a recommendation to you. And lest I forget it, the chairman needs to say something at the close of this service. Waiting, waiting. Some things in human nature never change, have you noticed? 2,000 years. The story I want us to look at today is a story of waiting. 
story about one man who was waiting. And it, and it happens like this. Jesus has come to Jerusalem for one of the major feasts, Pentecost, Feast of Tabernacles, Passover. We don't know which one, but he is in Jerusalem, and he comes in that gate. If you've been to the Holy Land, and some of you have, you remember there is the Lion's Gate or St. Stephen's Gate, it's called. And there was a gate right along there in Jesus' time. And he would have come in that gate, and he, when you do, you pass by the sheep market. And the folks back in Old Testament times, when they'd bring their sheep into the sheep market there, they would go a little further and, and let them drink at a pool, pool of Bethesda it's called now. And Jesus came in that gate, walked a little further from the sheep market area over to where this pool is. Beautiful pool in Jesus' time. It's probably a little larger than, than this building here. Uh, and all around it, it is surrounded with columns. You can still today see the remains. It must have been a, an exceedingly beautiful area. A big, beautiful spring, underground uh, spring there that bubbled water up. And these columns... All the way around a covered walkway with columns on each side of the walkway. And then right across the middle was another walkway with columns. People came there to take in the healing waters. It was sort of like uh, Warm Springs, Georgia, Hot Springs, Arkansas. These places that people used to, to gather uh, for the springs and the healing benefits. People came there for that. Um, lots of people crowded around this beautiful area with the columns and the steps going down to the pool. And uh, at certain intervals, the, the, the spring would boil up and people felt that an angel was there. It's, he stirred the waters and the first ones to get in would be healed. And so people flock there, some of them as a last straw, trying to find healing. And so I can imagine Jesus coming to that beautiful area and pausing for a moment, just standing there and looking around at that crowd. And as we look at that crowd, they're all ages, they're all ailments. But here is a fellow over here who's been there for 38 years. He has been brought here every day. And he sits there propped against a column. 38 years. 38 years is a long time when you think about it. We've got 18 years into this century uh, let's take 20 back from that. You find yourself in the middle of 1980. That's before some of you were born. That's before some of your parents were born. That's back when Jimmy Carter was president. Ronald, they haven't had the election yet. It's, Ronald Reagan hadn't even been elected, much less, uh, you know, the Bushes and the Clintons and the Obamas and, and the Trumps. This is way back there. To some of you, it must seem like it would have been in the dark ages. When you stop and think about it, there weren't very many personal computers at all. About the only computers we had were those big monstrosity IBM things, you know, that took up a whole bedroom size room. I remember I got my first computer in 1983 to uh, polish up a manuscript, and that was my excuse to tell my wife I got to have a computer. And they were brand new then, just floppies. You put a little floppy in, you know, and take it back, that kind of thing. Phones, iPhones, <laughs> not even dreamed of. Had these, a few people, maybe in 1980, had these big clunky uh, phones that were mobile phones, but they were big old things. Facebook, <laughs> Twitter, Instagram, laptops, iPads. Hey, none of that. Boy, that was a long time ago. 
38 years. It's a long time. That's how long the children of Israel wandered. You will remember that uh, at the end of about two years, they actually came out of Egypt to the edge of the promised land and chose not to go in. And so they wandered for 38 years. That's a long time. And here is a man. He's been there 38 years. 38 years. He, he's counted these columns thousands of times. He can tell you how many steps it is down to the water. He can he, he's traced the cracks everywhere. He knows most of the names of the people and he's watched them come and go. Because, you see, he's been there 38 years waiting. What's he waiting for? Well, he's waiting for the angel to stir the water. And he's going to try to get down there. And the waters would bubble and stir and you could hear the, you know, you can hear the, the screams and the cries and the prayers as people try to get down to the water. And, and some had friends that would help them. And, and then you can hear the, the excitement of those who come up out of the water healed. But not our man. 38 years watching other people get healed. Had he ever seen an angel? No. But surely that is the way God would do these kind of things, is it not? Yeah. But he's never been the one to get to the water first. For the race is to the swift. It does not matter what your disease is. It does not matter how sick you are. It does not matter how long you've been lying here. It's who can get down there first. And so he's been waiting and waiting and waiting. And then Jesus comes. And I can imagine him as he looks over the crowd. And finally, his gaze settles on this man, and he goes over to talk to him. I can imagine that he went over and that he sat down beside him. What would you say if you had been Jesus and you came here to talk to this fellow? Would you perhaps tell him, buck up, old man. One of these days, you'll be the first one down there. You just hang in there. Hmm. Or he could have probably said, you know, it's time for you to get reasonable. You're never going to get in the pool first. Just make your peace with your situation. Because this is who you are. This is how it is. Or he could have begun by asking him, how long have you been here? But you know what Jesus asked him? Interesting question. He said, do you want to be healed? Can you imagine a more ridiculous sounding question to a man who's been here paralyzed 38 years? Do you want to be healed? That's like, you know, that's like telling a pauper, do you want a million dollars? That's like telling a fellow who's starving to death, would you like a nice steak? It seems pretty obvious, doesn't it? it seems pretty clear. There is only one real answer is you bet. But if you read this story carefully... 
Because this is the heart of the story. Do you want to be healed? That's the heart. This story is not about angels stirring water. This story is not even about the 38 years. It's about whether he wants to be healed. And if you read the story carefully, the man didn't answer the question. He really didn't answer it. Do you want to be healed? He didn't say, of course. He started explaining, excusing why he wasn't healed. Now, that's really the sermon. But I want you to take two or three things home with you and mull them over. As you look at this, there may be a couple of reasons why this man didn't want to be healed. Maybe the first was he enjoyed poor health. You ever known anybody like that? Believe me, I have as pastor. <laughs> Folks who enjoyed being sick. And that may be this guy's case. Now, I don't know his name, but you know, he's been here 38 years. And every now and then, I suspect that when the news cycle got slow, every two or three years or so, maybe the, is it Journal Patriot would come out and interview him, you know. And I can see the headlines now. 38 years is a long time, says sick man at Bethesda Pool. And they wrote up a nice article about him, about his family that brought him every day, or maybe it was some friends, about how he had tried often but couldn't make it. And you know, it sounded pretty good. And maybe every now and then from Winston-Salem television crew come up. They interview him, you know. Makes a good human interest story. And so it may be that he began to sort of enjoy this situation. After all, he's a big fish in a little pond. Wasn't so bad. Maybe he enjoyed poor health is why he wasn't that anxious to be healed. There is another reason. It may be that he had just given up hope, you reckon? I can imagine when he was first brought that he thought within a few days when that water stirred, I can get down there somehow. I can roll, crawl, I'll get there. And I have an idea that he could imagine himself getting into the water and that cool water washing over his body and him standing up then strong, able to walk and the water cascading off of him and he flows his hair back and he strides up praising the Lord. I, I think he could see that. But you know, days turned into weeks and he began to realize, I can't get down there. Certainly not faster. And the weeks turned into months. And the months turned into years. Five, 10, 20, 25, 30. He lost all hope. I am going to be a cripple right here all of my life. Think about it. Are you that person? Notice that God himself cannot heal a person who doesn't want to be healed. We've seen that before, haven't we? If you don't want to be healed, God can't even heal you. For sometimes his power is released only when we welcome it and want it. Have you been waiting maybe 38 years? Have you been coming here to the pool and waiting and, and you, you're waiting for something exciting, for an angel, for a new pastor, 
for some new program. How long have you been at the pool? How long have you been waiting for the Lord to convince you of your sinfulness and his salvation? And sometimes it's true of churches, isn't it? 38 years is a long time to do the same thing when a world is changing all around us. Be careful. Don't sit by the pool and just do nothing. 38 years is a long time. For some of you, it's been 38 years probably since you invited anybody to come to church with you. It may have been 38 years for some folks since they've actually witnessed about what God has done in your life. 38 years. It's a long time. May God speak to us individually and as a church about the fact that we can't just lie by the pool. That Jesus is always here. Where two or more of my followers are gathered, there I am also. And he says to us at the pool, come to me, all ye that are heavy laden, burdened. Take my yoke. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Maybe time for you to, to get up from the pool. Now let's pray. Now, Father, speak through this scripture to our hearts, leading us to make individual decisions and even decisions that you would have this church to make that will make us effective, that we might be healed in body and soul and spirit serve you. And this we pray in Christ's name. Amen. We're going to stand and sing our closing hymn. It is a hymn of commitment, as all our hymns are when we come to the close of a time of worship. We need to recommit ourselves to the Lord, either where we are or simply as we pray down front or if we need to make a public decision to accept Christ or become a part of this church. You let the Lord speak to you as we sing. Hymn 410 and verses 1 and 4.
Dear Lord, we just thank you again for this day and this time and this message. Lord, it was a challenging message. Just help us take it, Lord, and plight our lives and plight outside these walls as we go out into our workplaces and to our world this week. Uh, help us proclaim what you've done for us and just help us invite people, Lord, to, to join us here to worship you and just um, help us not to sit around and wait. Help us to be a doer. Lord, we just pray now that you'd be with us and would bring us back to anointed time. We'll make sure that you get the praise and glory. For it's your name I pray. Amen. Amen.